Hi, my name is Sandy and I welcome you to the Old Time Patterns YouTube channel. This video is one in a series on making your own sewing patterns and this particular video is going to be about resizing sewing patterns that you um, buy commercially, um, you know like the, the big McCall's Simplicity uh, ones like that, but also the sewing patterns that I sell on the website for making historical clothes. This will work for them as well. Um, there are actually two ways to resize patterns that I'm going to be showing you and this first video is going to be the easy peasy simple as can be method to resize patterns. Uh, I've used this several times it works just fine um, and the next video after this I'm going to go over a more complicated more accurate way of resizing patterns and that'll be the way that they generally teach you how to do it uh, if you were to take fashion school. Um, so let's get started. Okay, this video is actually going to be about resizing patterns, resizing commercial patterns to fit you. Um, I do have a small collection of patterns that I've purchased off of Etsy, and Etsy is a wonderful place to get patterns, absolutely wonderful. Um, but most of the patterns, probably more than half of them, did not come in my size. Um, this is Simplicity 7167, um, it's a blouse pattern. And uh, I'm going to make this view B here. <laughs> I like the dark blue. That attracts me. That's what attracted me to the last pattern, too. Um, but anyway, this, this is only sized f sizes 4 through 10. Um, so I have to resize this pattern to fit me. And um, I've already cut out all the pieces that I'm going to need in the largest size. So I can get started on resizing these patterns so I can cut out my fabric. Okay, you can already see um, this is the back piece of the pattern. Let me get these other ones out of here so you don't get confused with all the lines. This is the back piece of the pattern and um, you can see where the sizing lines are. Um, your, your sizes 4 through 10 are marked on each of these, these ends. So um, this is pretty standard. You're not going to um, add anything to, well, add or subtract, you can size down as well. Um, you're not going to do anything with the center back. Um, very little changes ever get made at the bottom unless you're an extremely tall person and I'll go over that in a little bit. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some paper, some of my newsprint paper. Again, I buy bundles of newsprint paper at Walmart. It's readily available. Um, so I'm going to just get some little strips of paper and add on to these lines on all of the patterns um, so I'm ready to, to regrade it up to my size. All right, I've added extra paper to all my grading lines on all the pieces of the pattern that I'm working with right at the moment. So I'm ready to start drawing uh, my new lines, my new grades. And uh, in looking at the pattern here, that this one that I'm working with goes up to a size 10 which is a 32 and a half inch bust. And I need it to go up to a 44 inch bust. So the size 18 is 40 inches. So a size 20 would be 42 inches. And a size 22 would be 44 inches, which is pretty standard. I usually wear a size 22 in these patterns. Um, so I actually need to increase six sizes. Um, so looking at this first grade line on the side seam, uh, the grades are about a quarter of an inch apart, and this is pretty standard. Um, if you happen to be working with a pattern that only has one size and you can't see the grading lines, um, it is going to be graded in the same manner as I'm doing right now. Um, one size is right about half an inch. You can get, you can measure these 
and get an exact measurement if you want to. These are a, a quarter of an inch. These ones up here at the shoulder are a little bit more. You can see they're just a little bit wider. So you can go ahead and measure those and find out exactly how much you need to go over. Um, so I'm gonna add in six more sizes, which would be an inch and a half on this side seam. So I'm gonna go ahead and start measuring and drawing the new line here on the side. And I've got some dots here and now it's just kind of a matter of connecting the dots, drawing everything together into solid lines. And that's the basic process. We're just gonna do the same thing around the rest of this edge. Um, I'm gonna measure, these lines are just a little closer together right here, so I'm gonna measure how far apart they are. And it's about 3 eighths, so I would need 18 eighths, or one inch and one eighth of an inch. So I'll mark that. And these lines again are a quarter of an inch. try and follow the same curve that was there before. Again, these lines up at the shoulder are just a little bit more than a quarter of an inch, not much more though. Um, so I'm probably gonna add just another eighth of an inch. So an inch and a half plus an eighth of an inch on the end there. And I didn't add quite enough paper to this um, one section, so I've got to fix this real quick. Okay. So I've got all the new lines drawn for the new piece. And um, this is the back section. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the front piece. And then I'll show you what that one looks like. I've got all the new lines drawn on my front piece. Um, as you can see, I did actually two, two different lines on the, the front neckline. Um, doing six sizes just seemed like a little too much for me to get the proper curve. So I did it in two steps. I did three sizes and then another three sizes on top of that. Um, you can see where I kind of took out this one line because it just didn't look right when I was eyeballing it. Um, that would actually be the next step. Just kind of look at your, your patterns to see if they look right to you. Um, like, do you want the, the, the shoulder part of the sleeve to be that wide? Would you like it to be thinner? Um, you know, do you want the neckline to be a little wider? Um, do you want the sleeves to, to drop a little bit more? Um, stuff like that. You can eyeball it a little bit. Uh, straighten out your lines as, as you see fit. Um, I went ahead and drew in the lines on uh, the front facing. But of course, I can't finish this until I cut out my front piece because this has to be the same as that front piece is in size. So um, I'll finish that off in a little bit. Um, but you just continue with all of your pieces, uh, the same thing all the way around, and um, go ahead and cut out the new line. Okay, um, I went ahead and cut my um, front neckline so I can finish off this interfacing piece here. And I realized that, um, Oops, wrong one. 
No, that was the right one. I realized that when I had drawn the new lines, um, for whatever reason, I don't understand what this pattern was trying to do um, when it when it sized this this part right here. But this should be a smooth line in between um, your shoulder point and where it curves down across the front. So I went ahead and cut that straight right there, so it took off that little piece. Um, so then when we when we take our interfacing piece and we lay this over top of it, um, we would cut off that same piece again. And the interfacing piece came out pretty good. It's not exact, it's a little short. Um, but it's well within the seam allowance. And as long as when you're sewing it together, um, you make sure your pieces are tight together, it'll be just fine. Um, so I cut off that extra piece on, on here as well. Um, so the last thing to do would be um, to lengthen or shorten if you need that done. Um, and on this pattern, the length and or shortened line is marked. It's this double line right here in the center. And the waistline is also marked. Um, this one is curved up here, which puts the waistline kind of right here probably when you get all the way off to the side. And that's because of this dart here. When you pull the dart together, it'll, it'll kind of straighten that line out. Um, so this is your length and shortened. Um, because we can't see where the collarbone is up here, it would be difficult to use your measurements off of your chart for this particular modification, um, which would be the, the collarbone to the waistline is what you want. Um, so probably the easiest way to do this is to stand in front of a mirror and put this shoulder piece in the center of your shoulder. Um, and drop the piece down and then um, kind of judge where your waistline is from there. Of course, your waistline's easier to find on this side. It's, the, it's your, your thinnest point. So, I mean, I go right to mine, it's right there. So it's your thinnest point. So if your waistline is up higher, then you want to shorten this down. So you would either um, cut the line and bring the pieces together, cut, oh, cut, you know, cut half an inch off of this side half an inch off of this side and then join them together or you could just fold it over a little bit like that. Of course make sure you're using the same half inch on this side and the same half inch on that side if that's if that's your measurement that you're going down. Um, of course if you need to lengthen, if your waistline, if you're a really tall person and your waistline is actually sh uh, lower than this line then you want to add some in. So figure out how much you need to add in like an inch um, cut this, put some extra paper in the middle, and then tape it all back together. Again, make sure you got the same inch on the outside as you do on the inside. Um, very rarely do we add anything down to the bottom. That's just a matter of preference. If you actually want the piece to be longer, you can go ahead and add some across the bottom. Um, I would just make sure it's the same all the way across. And that's about it. I really hope this video was helpful for you. Thanks for joining me.